We're talking about these two, primarily Casablanca Beats right now, because the camera kicked out and honestly, I, I, I think that uh, God is interfering with this review. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna try to get her done anyway. So, Casablanca Beats, I'm talking about the, the part of the movie where the youth are discussing Islam and other things and there's one young woman in particular who's uh, a lot to say. has a lot to say and she mentions um, why can't uh, people get along today there was a time when Muslims lived in peace with Jews and Christians and um, that's never the case. It's uh, never been. No, it's and she says that Islam means peace, which it doesn't. It means submission. Or so, surrender. Yeah. So Surrender's if you think right that um, you might think, okay, well, if you believe that surrender and submission means peace, if they all mean the same thing, then you could say, okay, well, then uh, Jews and Christians, they uh, basically did surrender at one point to. Um, and they were paying really hefty taxes, uh, extra taxes, so that they could um, continue to be, tol be tolerated by Muslims. So that we're but in that power. Toleration is not tolerable. No. You have to be careful. Because sometimes words have different meaning. If, uh, if uh, Muslims in the free world today subjected to the kind of taxing that they that Muslims directed, themselves just directed. at them yeah and not at non muslim yeah they would be uh, right to say that's intolerant mm -hmm. uh, the uh, so even though uh, the, if the Muslims were saying when they put these special stuff on well we're tolerating the way they put it is we're protecting the Mafia does that type of protection. You pay money for their protection. Mm -hmm. you know? And it was a joke protection because uh, they weren't uh, Christians and Jews, and later on Zoroastrians and, I guess, to a certain extent, Hindus, were not allowed to carry, carry weapons. You know? the Muslims didn't want any rebellions, right? That's the kind of piece they're talking about. Mm -hmm. so, so, and I mean, there were times when not, they didn't, when Christians and Jews couldn't even rely on that sort of peace with Muslims, uh, when they were, uh, there were times when there were a lot of, um, when Mohammed himself was leading slaughters of Jews. So, do you want to talk about that at all? So, Mohammed. Early, early on in the latter stages of his career. <laughs> Excuse me. Stop down, stop down. You keep talking for a while. Stop down, stop down. Oh. Potatoes don't go. Okay, and well, James brings up another point um, that this woman talked about uh, the Quran and how people will pick out um, aggressive parts or whatever. I don't know how she worded it. Uh, and follow that rather than following the peace and love and whatever. She be saying so that, taking it up out of context. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the Quran isn't very long. It's been translated into all sorts of languages, as the Bible has. So, or the New Testament. Yeah, but in a different sure, kind of way. It's only recently yeah. that they've started to translate it into mm -hmm. uh, what are called the vernaculars, the local mm -hmm. languages. So you probably have a point to make about uh, things written earlier in the Quran and then um, when it's contradicted later on which is which is what you're supposed to follow mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's called Amazing. abrogation that's a Latin term I can't recall what the Arabic term is for but if there's a contradiction between two passages in the Quran, the latter, the later one, I should say, 
the later one abrogates the first. In other words, it just erases the first. So it doesn't matter if you find that what really happens is not people selecting the most violent passages. What they tend to do is select the most anodyne, in other words, the most peaceful passages, and say this represents Islam. And those peaceful passages have been abrogated. It's really dirty on this side. I guess you don't it's mind. fine. Okay. I don't care. Just talk. Anyway. There's one passage, there's no compulsion in religion. Well, that's been taken out of context. The context is there is compulsion in Islam. It just is. The idea is that there is um, there's selective taxation on the tolerated peoples. And that's only the Jews, Christians, Zoroastrians, Hindus, and maybe other select. So the others are subject to, uh, the other to members of other religions are subject to enslavement and uh, failing that uh, death if they don't convert. That's uh, that's uh, pretty compo compelling. <laughs> yeah, there is compulsion in religion. That passage is just, uh, it's just... Uh, so much garbage, it doesn't mean anything because of the passages that came later on. Is it, uh, we'll deal with Islam, does it mean peace? We have things in languages that are called derivations. Generally, in Indo European languages, to derive a word with a different meaning from an original word, what we call a root, you will add stuff to the end of that word. An example is Pax, P-A-X. That means peace in Latin. It probably was originally something like P-A-C-I-S, and I got dropped out and they were left with Pax, and then they replaced that with an X, the C-S. Okay? Pax, peace. So the root really is P-A-C. Okay? What do we get from that? Pacification, which is the making of peace. But, uh, you know, what uh, the United States was trying to do in Iraq, starting 2003, and in Afghanistan, starting in 2001, is pacification. I defy anyone to tell me that their efforts were peaceful. It involved war. Okay? Now, uh, yeah, so the mere fact that pacification comes from peace is derived, and that's the linguistic term, from peace, doesn't mean pacification means peace. The way the uh, the uh, Semitic languages, and this includes Ju uh, Jewish, or Hebrew I should say, Arabic, a lot of dead languages like uh, Akkadian, which is used by Babylonians and Assyrians, uh, pretty well uh, dead languages like Aramaic, um, Syriac, definitely dead languages like Ammonite, the, the, the capital of Jordan, Ammon, uh, retains that name. The ancient Ammonites came from there. They're not Arab. Not the, not the native language of uh, the original language of present-day Jordan. Sorry to have to bear that. Uh, horrible news. I'm sure it's horrible to some people. Um, so, what you tend to do with the Semitic languages, their roots tend to be just consonants, and they're called triliterals in most cases. Sometimes there's four consonants, sometimes there's two or even less. But the idea is there's three for most of them. And uh, so with uh, the root that means something like to make peace, because the roots tend to be come from verbs. Right? It'd be something like salama. See how it's got S and an L and M. Consonants count. The vowels count for a different sort of thing. What you do is you change them and rearrange them around the S and the L and the M, the triliteral. So what you do to take salama, which means something like to be peaceful, maybe to make peace, you get salam, S A L long A M. Salam. That means 
something like peace be on you. That's okay. That has a peaceful kind of meaning. That's that's nice. Okay, what happens if you put I in front of uh, in front of the S? Slam the S and L together, and you retain the A, and you drop the uh, the A between the L and the M, and drop the A off the end. You end up with Islam. What does that mean? It doesn't mean peace. It means surrender. It means submission. So on a personal level, submission. But uh, basically, it can be. Uh, uh, it often has involved surrender. A whole people surrenders to, uh, like the, the uh, leader of a country surrenders to the Muslims coming in, and then Islam is imposed on the people hmm, of that country. So Islam doesn't mean that. Muslim, see how it's got S, L, M? Sometimes you can add M's and T's at the beginning of these triliterals, and you shift around the vowels and change them and stuff like that. And Muslim is sees S, L, M, not someone who has submitted. And that's a believer. All right. It's, it's someone who's uh, got fidelity to the religion. So Muslim, see how that works out? So. Probably don't, but uh, you better, because just because you don't understand something, innocence is uh, innocence is bliss until reality comes and beats you upside the head. Huh? All right. So, as I was um, mentioning, the people who are discussing this are young people. So they're teenagers um, who are rappers, and so when. The young woman, she's the one who's primarily um, leading this discussion about um, Islam and other religions. Like when she says things like, um, not all Christians rape children, or um, some Jews are good people. Yeah. Some Jews are good people. Um, so I don't know what exactly she said, but watch the show and find out. I'm um, going to say that so, about Muslims. Some Muslims don't rape kids, and some <laughs> Muslims don't um, are yeah. good people. Yeah, and, and people would not like to hear that, right? So, I, and it's, it's, uh, but you listen to it and you're like, well, you know, she's a teenage girl in Morocco who likes to rap. She might, education might not be a, a real strong point for her. Or anywhere in um, that society. So. Yeah. You kind of think, okay, well, where is this going? Where is this going? Whatever, right? But, um, I mean, it's, it's funny because we ran across, we meet a lot of people. James is very social. And we met a woman named Aisha. Um, and she was a very nice woman. And right away, because of her name, a lot of the time you can tell James knows a lot about language. And he's read the Quran numerous times. And Three times in English. Yep. One sixth of the time studied it, not really read it, mm -hmm. uh, in the original Arabic. Started it in Urdu, translation of Urdu. And started, I actually have six copies of English, different English translations of the Quran. I have okay. three different copies, so hopefully it's the same text in the Arabic, different than one in Urdu. Those are my own personal copies. Too. So, anyway, he knew that she was from a Muslim background, based on her name. So, do you want to talk about Aisha? I've kind of forgotten her. What? Where was it that I met her? No, you don't have to talk about her, where her name came from, or something well, that's like that. The, uh, because, I mean, this barely. woman was talking about um, not all Christians have sex with children, or whatever. Yeah, it's amazing. So, okay. why can't we get along with more Christians? Because not all of them have sex with children. Okay. So, Aisha was, according to the accounts, and there are not just one, the favorite wife of Muhammad. How old was she when uh, Muhammad died? 10 plus 8, 18 years old. Uh oh. According to generally accepted civilized standards, that's just barely an adult. Yeah. 18 years old. 
That means he was married to her. Unless it was just like a quick, quick marriage. You know, in the last kind of like year, just after she turned 18, there we have some problems. She was, well, the counts that I've run across say that they were married when she was six years old. Now he was a very reticent kind of fellow. He could really control uh, that uh, part of his uh, anatomy between his thighs. And he restrained himself for three whole years before consummating the marriage. So what does that mean? Six plus three is nine years old. Yeah. Absolutely shameful. Now so the apologists, for... I don't want to hear apologists. I want to hear apologies to women about this. Mm -hmm. Because um, the apologists say, oh, she reached sexual maturity early. That doesn't matter. The issue, the issue, girls reach sexual maturity before 18. And in civilized societies, the age of consent is 18 when uh, an adult is dealing with uh, a girl and uh, an adult male. It's 18. Why? It's not about sexual maturity. It's about psychological maturity and social maturity. That's the issue. Which, frankly, should be even later. Than there we go. That's a woman speaking, okay? Um, and I don't necessarily disagree. Anyway, so I don't know what else I was going to talk about in this. Um, I, I was just going to say that um, one may think, well, this young woman and these, these young rappers discussing this subject in general, um, they really might not have known very much about, because a lot of the time we don't expect Christians to know much about the religion that um, they claim to follow. A lot of the time you meet Christians and you're like, wow, obviously you haven't really read the Bible because mm -hmm. you have no idea. But, but whatever. Follow or a spouse. You will get people who are Christians yeah. who will be telling you all sorts of stupid things about Christianity. I first heard about the, became aware of the prosperity gospel. I was waiting for a bus. I had a captive audience. This old guy, old guy, old enough to know better. I got there early for the bus. Ontario, I always like to get there just on time. <laughs> yeah, but, that's how James is. Well, I can't do it. <laughs> or late. I used to run. Wow. But uh, I got five fracture burden. So the guy was saying, did you know that Jesus was rich? He actually owned his own donkey. No, he didn't. There isn't a. He came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. I think it was supposed to be the the child of a donkey or something like that. Well, one thing though, the Christians did Christianity stressed working. So that's that's a strong distinction so Paul between was, uh, so uh, Christianity Saint, and Buddhism. Well, yeah, it, I don't believe in mendicant monk, monks and stuff like that. Where are you rocking around with a? Yeah. Do the color prayer bowl. I'm praying for you to give me some chow. The monks are you know, generalized ideas that are supposed to take care of themselves. You don't. You you don't have a right just because you're some religious flunky to uh, depend on peasants and other working people for your livelihood. You better get up and roll up your sleeves. I don't care if it's a a monk's cowl or something like that, monk's habit or whatever, you roll up your sleeves and do your work. Don't sit around begging by the side of a road or wherever. Um, anyway, yeah, you know, like, uh, I, I just didn't know what to say. They, what effrontery. So this guy's trying to teach me about Christianity, and what happened is Jesus told his disciples, I can't remember the place, Bethany or something like that, just before he's getting ready to go into Jerusalem. Go in there. And you'll find a, a, a mother donkey and a, a, a foal, or a donkey foal, and take them away and uh, for me. Well, <laughs> if anyone asks, say it's for the Lord. Well, it's kind of theft. 
Okay. I mean, he's not hiding it. It's for the Lord, Jesus, or whatever. And then he comes riding in on the donkey, because that's apparently how, what King David, who was, according to the Bible, a New Testament, I should say, an ancestor of Jesus. That's how he came into Jerusalem, on a, a young donkey or something like that. So Jesus wanted to duplicate that feat. So, he didn't know that donkey. He was a poor guy. Anyway, um, so as far as um, what these, this one woman said in particular in this um, discussion that the people were having in this movie, um, it was offensive, but one could say, well, she might not know much about the religion. We have, or we should have, uh, an assumption that women in Muslim countries uh, probably don't have as uh, strong an education as the men. If the we don't, men don't have a strong education. If we don't have that assumption, it's it's not that you know. If we have that assumption, it's not that we're being um, racist or something like that. It's that we're actually informed. It has nothing to do so, with race. Islam, uh, Muslims pride themselves. Uh, there's a first among equals are Arabs. On being uh, kind of like ecumenical when it comes to converting people of other races. The first Muslim was apparently a black guy. Way back when, in Muhammad's time. Black guy. They will convert, of course, have a bad record uh, treating their fellow Muslims in Sudan, black people. Um, they have a very bad record when it comes to slavery. Way worse than Europeans. Are you listening, folks? Way worse than Europeans. Europeans, 11 million slaves from Africa. Muslims, 15 million over the centuries. And if you want to contest that 15 million, I'm willing to bargain. But I understand. When I'm dealing with people who aren't bargaining in good faith, you're going to bargain me up. Because if you say, oh, it was lower than 15 million, I say, well, there's a guy called Al Gabri, and that's not like Al Bundy. That's an Arabic name. A guy comes from a Muslim background who says the Muslims took 20 million black folks. Eh? So I'm underestimating based on my the sources that I've run across. Eh? So would you say that hip-hop is a peaceful, um, peace, love, and flowers sort of uh, music type? Okay, this is a Frank Sinatra kind of answer. You know, Frank Sinatra said, is uh, when someone asked him if milk was good for people, he said, ask Pat Boone. Well, is hip-hop a uh, 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 violent um, medium? Mm -hmm. Ask Tupac Shakur and Big Daddy Smalls or whatever his fat, <laughs> fat Daddy Smalls. What was his name? Big Smalls? Biggie Smalls. There we go. So why I'll did I bring forget. this out with this? Well, in this story, there there's a bit of culture can, um, cancel culture that takes place. One um, commander, he's uh, like a tattered ear, tomcat sort of eared sort of oh. uh, uh, alien. Too many alley flags, yeah. But he's he looks like an old white male, and he gets um, gets his rank pulled from him because he decided to um, do something to he he followed orders in a way that was putting a bunch of people at risk and. Uh, so uh, the people that they were following got away and whatever. Wow. Just, so, just like a white guy he to got improvise, eh? And it's a jazzy but sort of thing to do. But this commander, she decided, I want you as my uh, number one, basically. Um, because even though he, he had his rank stripped from him, um, she wanted to give him another chance sort of thing and she wanted to she knew that she could count on him to not be a yes man to give his opinions and whatever and there's in this story 
there's um, a group of aliens called the Breen, and it seems pretty obvious to me that they're Muslims, uh, or they're supposed to be like a representation of uh, Muslim people. And but what do I know? I mean, I I look at this Star Trek thing as. Uh, I had an ex-boyfriend who he said the original Star Trek, he, he listed off who all the groups were um, supposed to be and it had like World War II, um, anyway, uh, the different alien groups represented different um, key players, uh, cultures in World War II. So, um, and so whenever I look at Star Trek, I look for stuff like that now. So maybe I'm just reading into it. but. Um, the old white guy, the tomcat ear guy, uh, he he's saying they can't be trusted, they can never be trusted, you, you know, you just, he's very opposed to them and whatever. And I thought, gee, you know, this kind of reminds me of people like James, right, who were talking about uh, Islam and not being uh, really heard. And then it turns out, oh yeah, they're right. Eek. You know, it's the truth isn't always comfortable. So, anyway, I don't know if you want to talk any more no, about that sort of thing. Five minutes. Yeah, you have about four. Well, three. So wrap it up in three. Well, I'll be talking about them. But, uh, we were talking about taking things out of context. The stuff that gets taken out of context is the peaceful stuff. I've got a book, going through it slowly. It's on appetizer. Just war in Islam. Yeah, there's a just war in Islam, according to this book. Well, there's one type of war that this writer is talking about is defensive war. And it's enjoined on every Muslim. Doesn't matter, man, woman, child lame, old, sick, they got if uh, Islamic property is invaded, every Muslim has to come to its defense. Okay? This is right in the Quran. And this is now in context. Because what comes after? The other type of war, which is enjoined only on able-bodied adult males. Okay, we've eliminated defensive war. What's left? Offensive war, and it's war that's prescribed by the Muslim leader. And they have to answer. That you cannot justify. That's not a just war. That's a war of expansion. Eh? And that's dealt with at length in the Quran. It's not taken out of context. It's not one verse, as it were. Got that straight? I want you to check it up. Anyone who's, well, cynical about it, you're not going to check it up, but skeptical about it. I want you to go to the sources. I don't want your sources to be what's between your ears until you've done some data entry. I'm not interested in that kind of stupidity. I really think nice thoughts about everyone. Do that with the Nazis and see how fast that, how far that gets you. That's enough said.